For 13 years of preaching in Mecca, Prophet Muhammad was only able to recruit a hundred followers. Most of them were slaves and young people from low social classes. Why was the number of followers so small? Let's ask non-Muslim Meccans. That's because most of us don't like or trust him. He had derided our traditional values, abused our forefathers, reviled our religion, caused divisions among us, and insulted our gods. If we insulted back, they shed our blood, and felt proud of it. For instance, we mocked them while they were praying. One of the Muslim, Sa'ad ibn Abu Waqqas, grabbed a camel jaw and hit and injured one of us. Ibn Ishaq informs the story in his book Sirat Rasul Allah, page 118. Sa'ad ibn Abu Waqqas and several Muslims went to the valleys not far from Mecca to pray. A band of polytheists saw them and started to interrupt them rudely since Muhammad regularly insulted their religion. The Muslims were very upset and How came atrocious. to blows. Teach them. The angered Sa'ad ibn Abu Waqqas grabbed camel jawbone. He hit one of the men with it and wounded him. This was the first injury caused in Islam. It was a Muslim who drew the first blood. The polytheists were shocked at this event. Why so cruel? And they said Islam is a peaceful religion? So how did Prophet Muhammad recruited his followers then? He promised us to be the kings of the Arabs and the non-Arabs. He said that after we die, we shall be brought back to life and our lot shall then be gardens like the gardens of Jordan. He also claims that if we do not do this, we shall meet with slaughter after him, and that after death we shall be brought back to life, and our lot shall then be a fire, in which we shall burn. Muhammad enticed his followers with a lot of richness in the future and threatened them with hell fire if they didn't comply. Only a small number of people believe in his promises. Although he was not that successful with his career as a prophet, Muhammad did not worry because he had the best supporter in the community, which was his wife Khadija. During his lifetime in Mecca, his wife, Khadija, supported him financially. Khadija was a very successful businesswoman in the field of transportation and trade. She was the richest person in Mecca. Muhammad never learned to run his wife's business. He was also not adept at reading and writing, so his ability to help his wife's business was very limited. I don't know how to read and write. To add and subtract gets me uptight. I don't know much about history. I make it up as I go, you see. For this reason, after Khadija died, Muhammad lost his income source. He did not know how to continue his wife's business. Because there was no support from the Quraysh community in Mecca for him, Prophet Muhammad tried to find new supporters from outside of Mecca. Al-Mutana ibn Harida was a Bedouin leader, whose tribe was under the protection of the Persian Empire. Prophet Muhammad met Al-Mutana, in hopes that he could gain protection from them. Would you accept Islam and give me protection, so that I can convey the message of my Lord? No, I can't do that because I don't want to break my agreement with Kizra, the Persian emperor. Be patient, just wait, and you will see that Allah will make you inherit Persian lands, money, and their women will be available for you. Prophet Muhammad promised the Arab Bedouin great wealth, property, and women that belonged to other people, and would be given by Allah to them, if they accepted Islam. This showed that he had no respect for non-Muslims' peace and prosperity, and regarded them as fair game. Prophet Muhammad approached the leader of Banu Bakar. Would you accept Islam and give me protection? We had a truce and protection from the Persian Empire. Therefore, we don't need your religion. If you believe in Allah, and if Allah decide to keep you alive after wars, you will enjoy your life. You will live in Persians' houses, have Persian women, enslave Persian men.
because he kept repeating the same message when he was desperate to have allies, we could see his true motive in spreading Islam was to gain physical prosperity and pleasure. He used religion to unite people under him to achieve his worldly desire. After experiencing many rejections from various parties outside Mecca, he finally managed to get support from the Medina people who were conducting a pilgrimage ceremony in Mecca. Around 75 Medinan Muslims met Muhammad in Aqaba cave, not far from Mecca. They vowed loyalty to Muhammad and promised to protect him and Muslims from Mecca who planned to move to Medina. Feeling he had strong support, Muhammad began to issue killing verses for those who dared to oppose him. Quran, Surah Al-Hajj, verse 39. Permission to fight is granted to those being fought, for they have been wrong. And Allah is truly most capable of helping them victory. Quran, Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 193. And fight them until there is no strife or fitna, and the religion is for Allah only. Yet in case they refrain, then there shall be no hostility except against the unjust. Some Muslims did not want to migrate to Medina with him. Well, I'm not sure I want to migrate. We have our families here. We will lose our jobs if we move to Medina. What if I don't want to go? So Prophet Muhammad had to come out with several Quranic verses to intimidate and warn them. Quran Surah Al-Anfal, verse 72. And the ones who have believed, and have not emigrated, in no way are you to offer them patronage in anything until they emigrate. This means Muslims who didn't migrate will lose their protection from other Muslims until they migrate. Muhammad even ordered Muslims to kill any Muslims who tried to return back to Mecca. Quran, Surah An Nisa, verse 89. They wish you would disbelieve as they have disbelieved, so you may all be alike. So do not take them as allies unless they emigrate in the cause of Allah. But if they turn away, then seize them and kill them wherever you find them, and do not take any of them as allies or helpers. What? Do we have to kill our fellow Muslims? He had never ordered this before. For those Muslim who don't want to migrate, their abode is hell, and it is an evil resort. According to the standard Islamic narrative, the Muhajirin departed by groups to Medina in 622 AD. Prophet Muhammad and Abu Bakr migrated a month later. The Meccan Muslims are referred to as Muhajirun or the emigrants, while the Medinan Muslims are referred to as Muslim Ansar or the helpers. After living in Medina for seven months, the Muslim emigrants from Mecca still live in severe poverty. Where is the manifestation of his promise to get wealth owned by Khusro, the Persian emperor, and king of Byzantine? We have no adequate job here, so we continue to be poor. Previously in Mecca, we had supportive families and livelihoods. We are hungry all the time here. Not only very poor, but their bodies were very dirty and smelling of sheep because they rarely took a shower. Sunan Abu Dawud, number 4022. Narrated Abu Burda. My father said to me, My son, if you had seen us while we were with the Messenger of Allah, and the rain had fallen on us, you would have thought that our smell was the smell of the sheep. Even Muhammad himself was full of lice. Hadith Sahih Bukhari, Volume 4, Book 52, Number 47. Allah's Apostle used to visit Umm Haram bint Milhan, who would offer him rails. Umm Haram was the wife of Yubada ibn as Samit. Allah's Apostle, once visited her and she provided him with food and started looking for lice in his head. Prophet Muhammad forbidden a man to be alone with a woman who was not his wife or a close relative, but he visited his friend's wife often, even when she was alone in her house. He even asked her to touch his head for a long time. The hypocrite Prophet expected others to follow his rules, that he freely violated. Prophet Muhammad knew that he had to do something to improve the Muhajirin's poor condition and to start making his lofty promises of richness and prosperity come through. I had to act before the Muhajirin left me. Robbing Jewish tribes is not possible because my people are small and have no adequate strength. 
The only choice was to rob the Quraysh caravan, as did Abu Jandal. Robbing and killing infidels were not something new for Muslims. In the past, Muhammad's followers such as Abu Jandal, Abu Basir, and their Muslim gangs in Mecca used to attack, kill, and rob the Quraysh traders when they headed to Damascus, Syria. Muhammad gathered the Muslim Muhajirin. Dear people, Allah already give us permission to fight against those people who wronged us. Indeed, Allah is competent to give us victory. We were evicted from our homes just because we say, our Lord is Allah. We will attack the Quraysh caravan and take their goods. What? Does Allah really allow us to loot infidels goods? Of course Allah allowed me to loot the infidels. Allah has made booty legal for me although it was not lawful for anyone else before me. I've been helped by terror in the heart of the enemy. I've been given words which are concise but comprehensive in meaning. And while I was asleep I was brought the keys of the treasures of the earth which were placed in my hand. Hadith Sahih Bukhari, Volume 4, Chapter 88, Page 108 Narrated Ibn Umar that the Prophet said, My livelihood is under the shade of my spear, and he who disobeys my orders will be humiliated by paying jizya. Footnote number one says, under the shade of my spear means from war booty. My livelihood is under the shade of my spear, and he who disobeys my orders will be humiliated by paying jizya. That's right Muhammad Mosit, he was the messenger of Allah.